Thank you, Meredith. Thank you very much. I am very proud and deeply humbled to be the recipient of the Honors of the Association Award. I absolutely love being part of AG Bell. I'm looking around right now. I see people who have been coming to the AG Bell conventions for a long time, and I'll see some people who may be coming here for just the first time. And I hope everybody, I hope everybody understands just what a good impact the association has made on all our lives. I, I can spend all weekend talking about the good work that AG Bell has done over the decades, but because of time constraints, I'm gonna have to let myself to some of the biggies. So, if you were a member of AG Bell in 1976, and you got your spring newsletter, and you turned to page six, you would have seen an article about this new invention called the cochlear implant and informing you a little bit about the background and development and letting you know that it was, there was gonna be a panel about the uh, implant at the 1976 convention. A.G. Bell has always been a champion of the cochlear implant. Believe it or not, there was a period of time when some very well-meaning but misguided organizations were against the cochlear implant and opposed its, new, uh, its use. A.G. Bell saw the potential that the implant had to improve the lives of deaf, deaf persons and have always uh, supported it. So if you like your implant, and I like mine, you can thank A.G. Bell for that. And, um, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you, see, you see cart over there, you see the cart interpreting. It happens all the time at large public gatherings like this, political conventions, churches, uh, graduates, and things of that nature. You know where that started the first time a cart was used for interpreting in a large public gathering? It was right here in A.G. Bell Convention, the opening session in the 1980s. That's where it began. Again, do you like cart? You can thank A.G. Bell for that. Yep. Yep. Also, also I mean, I don't know if you noticed or not, but if you go to movie theaters the past couple of years, you've know, you may have noticed that the, the, the captioning access technology at movie theaters has greatly increased. That didn't just happen. Oh, no, no, no. A.G. Bell was involved in a lot of lawsuits against movie theaters, arguing that the Americans with Disabilities Act required movie theaters to implement captioning access technology. We fought, we, uh, we fought hard, we won some, we lost some. Eventually, the Department of Justice, the U.S. Department of Justice, uh, agreed with A.G. Bell and got involved in these lawsuits, and the movie theaters pretty much uh, cried uncle, and they uh, started implementing um, the captioning access um, technology in their theaters on a, on, a, on a broad scale. So if you enjoy going to movies or taking your deaf child to movies, again, you can thank A.G. Bell for that. Yep. That's right. And, and on a broader scale, Dr. Bell, as Amelia was discussing earlier, he was a man ahead of his time. He, he firmly believed that deaf children should have the opportunity to mainstream, become mainstream members of society, have the same opportunities as everybody else. Thanks to the large part of the infrastructures and policies advocated by Dr. Bell and the association throughout the decades, Dr. Bell's vision became official U.S. policy in the, 1970s, in the 1970s when the Rehabilitation Act was passed and in the 1990s when the American Disabilities Act was passed. And I myself, I myself was a beneficiary of Dr. Bell's vision and A.G. Bell's advocacy. I was able to mainstream and at least eventually receive the accommodations that allowed me to become a lawyer, a profession I enjoy very much. I've, um, I've been a lawyer for 17 years now, and I've represented all types of clients in my career, filed briefs for multi-billion dollar corporations, filed briefs for, on behalf of indigent prisoners, but nothing gives me more pleasure when I sign a brief, John F. Stanton, counsel for the Alexander Graham Bell Association for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. <laughs> And of course, of course, A.G. Bell's advocacy and vision only provided the pathway for my life, the people who were actually helping me get down that pathway, my parents, my sister, my friends, my families, I could not have done it without them. So my mom, she oversaw all my schoolwork and homework at a time when accommodations in the classroom were very minimal. My dad, my dad, he volunteered to coach all my youth sports teams to ensure that I was able to understand everything that was being said in practice in the fields. I couldn't do it without them. I love them both very much, the best parents I can have. My dad's standing right here. Dad, please stand up, please stand up, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. <laughs> and of course, there's uh, my wife, Cindy, 
and uh, my children, Charlotte, Annabelle, and Elizabeth. They would love to be here today, but uh, they have to stay in Washington because Elizabeth was born la last month, so they couldn't make the trip. I know they're here in spirit, though. Um, they're very proud of me, and I certainly hope to continue to make them proud of me in the future. And again, I am, I, I'm so touched by this award. I mean, without my family, without the hard work of A.G. Bell's advocacy, I would not be here today. So thank you so much all for everything, and I'm looking forward to working with you all in the future to help continue that progress. Thank you. <laughs>